Hey guys, as you can see for this video, I've chosen to give it the title Smile and Keep Your Cool. And uh, this is kind of a response to a little bit of a dialogue I was having on someone else's YouTube channel. And we were, we were talking about dealing with, uh, in that particular case, street vendors. And so I'm going to back up and share a story that I'm pretty sure I have shared on this channel before. But when I first arrived in the Philippines, I was doing ministry with some, with some folks who had been there for a few weeks and some uh, veteran missionaries. And one of, the, one of the young men who had been there for, at that point, a few weeks, he knew more than I did, and sent me a text message and said something to the effect of, smile, you're scaring the students. And I thought that was kind of weird. I'm thinking, how am I scaring someone? And he, he was right. He, he told me that by me looking so serious, it kind, of, it kind of intimidated the students and it gave them the idea that I was not in a good mood. And I, and I think he even sent a text message to me and said, show your fangs, meaning you have to really show your teeth when you smile there. And that's something you'll notice about the people in the Philippines. Uh, they're always smiling. And it's really nice because it kind of puts you in a good mood. They're just always smiling. Uh, they've chosen to be very happy. The Filipino smile is kind of defiant. But there are times, obviously, where you don't feel like smiling. You get in a long line. You get frustrated. And in those situations, it's best to remind yourself, I am not in my home country and I just need to smile, or grin and bear it, as they say. And I will give you a, a couple of examples, uh, or, or one in particular. I'm talking about uh, issues where, or situations where you're bargaining. <clears throat> so let's just say, let me grab another uh, sip of caffeine here. <clears throat> let's just say that you're dealing with a street vendor or someone in the market, and you know your one of your Filipino friends or your Filipino wife has bought something there and you know the price is supposed to be about 20 peso and you go in there and the vendor or you're on the street wherever it is and the vendor says uh, 40 peso the vendor gives you double the price now at that point especially if you're new to the culture you really have a couple of options you can smile and kind of joke about it and say, why is this so expensive? My, uh, my wife just bought this for 20 peso. Has there been inflation? You know, you can kind of joke around about it. And eventually you'll get to the right price on it. That's, one, that's the approach I would recommend. You smile. You joke around about it. Uh, the other option, of course, is to be a jerk. And threaten them and, and have a serious look on your face. And one thing, again, you have to understand is in the Philippines, if you have like a scowl on your face and you're looking, you're, you're looking uh, angry, that's already kind of considered aggressive there, especially as a foreigner, because many of us are physically larger than some of the people there. I'm not a huge guy, but I'm about 5'10", about 190 to 200 pounds. So if I walk in doing this to somebody, then it's going to be kind of intimidating. And if you do that, if you take the jerk approach, you can probably get the price that you want. But especially if you're dealing with someone locally, maybe near where you live, then you basically broadcast to everyone there that you're a jerk. And you're not going to be very well liked and you're going to destroy a lot of relationships. So generally speaking, it's best to smile and keep your cool. And remember, whatever this is, it's probably not the biggest deal in the world. Now, that's one of the mistakes that I made from time to time is I would get frustrated about something and I would drop my smile. And immediately that kind of made things tense between myself and whoever I was dealing with. Now, uh, did I ever lose my cool or raise my voice to someone or speak in a way that was not pleasant. Sure. In in both, I'll give you two examples of times when I didn't necessarily regret it in 
you can just make the decision yourself if it was called for or not. Uh, but I can remember one time where I bought a, we bought a cell phone. We bought cell phones for some of the summer missionaries that were with us. And these were college students or young people who were with us for, let's say, six to eight weeks to do ministry. And in this particular case, we bought a little Nokia phone, and it turned out that the, the microphone in, in this phone did not work. They sold a defective phone to her, and this was at the mall there in one of the malls in Manila. And when we went into the mall, we, we bought it, not realizing this, we went back to the store, and they did not want to replace it. They said something about going to the Globe Center to repair it. And anyone who's ever spent any time in Manila knows that just it's not like you can just drive down the street and get something done there. They basically wanted us to spend a day, a week, who knows, to fix this phone that they had sold to us, which was already messed up. And I didn't just yell at the top of my lungs or anything like that, but I did raise my voice a little and told them that they should be responsible for this because they sold us a broken phone. And I was doing this in front of probably half a dozen customers in there and telling them that we're never going to buy anything from this store again. Uh, it didn't work. They didn't, they didn't uh, make good on the phone. They didn't give us a new one. Uh, because in the Philippines, the customer's always right thing. That doesn't work. But anyway, that's a situation where I did kind of, uh, you know, raise my voice a little bit and speak in a way that was not so pleasant. Uh, I didn't cuss them out. That's not my, <laughs> that's not my thing. But anyway, uh, in that particular situation, I was not really concerned with maintaining a relationship with those people. And I was trying to put pressure on them to give us a, a good phone. It didn't happen. It didn't work. So that's one situation. Uh, another situation I've talked before about the issues you'll have when you come into the Manila airport, how there are a lot of uh, scammer taxis. And what I used to do is I would, I used to uh, go up to the top, the top level. I would, once you get outside, there's a way where you can walk up to the top level and grab just a regular taxi that's dropping someone off. Uh, it's kind of a, a lot of work for the money you save, but I was doing it. And I got into a taxi with a couple of guys, and I asked them in Tagalog if they had a meter. They said yes, but then when we got in the taxi, they started giving me this really outrageous price. And I just told them, you, I'm going to either uh, go down right here on the street, or you give me this price. And I forgot what price it was. More than just the regular metered taxi, but, but I gave them a fair price. And once we arrived to where I was staying that night in Pasay, the, we stopped and I'm getting my luggage out and they start asking for a big price again. Now keep in mind at that point, I was, you know, this has been a 24-hour ordeal of getting over there. I was tired, sleepy, cranky, so I kind of chewed them out in Tagalog. So that was their tip as they got chewed out by a white guy in Tagalog. So, you know... Again, same thing, I was not concerned about uh, maintaining any type of a relationship with those guys. I was aggravated with them. And I'm sharing all this so I hope you see the, I hope you understand the, the difference in the two stories. When you're dealing with people that you're probably going to see on a regular basis, and or when you're dealing with something that's not that big of a deal, five pesos or something like that, Again, it's best to smile, keep your cool, and that way people know that you have an idea of the way things work in the Philippines, that you're not a hothead, that you're not a jerk. That's the best way to approach it in most situations. There can be situations where you feel the need to be more assertive, but I would say that needs to be the exception and not the rule. Because, again, I'm not saying that you need to let people walk all over you. Uh, I didn't do that. But the point I'm making is most of the time, <clears throat> sorry, most of the time you can smile and you can probably negotiate or bargain or whatever and end whatever situation it is without looking like a jerk. So uh, I hope what I'm sharing with you makes sense. And this is especially helpful for those of you or especially challenging perhaps for those of you who are 
impatient or more hot-tempered, just remember that's something you will have to keep in check in the Philippines. Otherwise, people will think you're a jerk. So smile and stay calm.